We are in Salem, Massachusetts, at least for the next couple of hours. We're gonna look around and show you what we've seen. It's a very scary place. The Salem witch trials took place here and you get an eerie feeling as soon as you, nah, we really didn't feel any eerie feeling when we got here. We did pass by a satanic temple and that kind of gave us the Ibby Jibbies a little bit, kind of weird. Not even gonna bother showing that one though because uh, there's so many other interesting things to show about Salem, Massachusetts, and we can't wait to show them to you. This is St. Peter's Episcopal Church, founded in 1733. The first congregation of the Church of England gathered in Salem in 1626, driven underground by the Puritans. It reemerged in 1733 as St. Peter's Parish. Built on land given by Philip English, one of the accused Salem witches, just before the revolution, it was the state church of the British royal governor. In 1773, Nathaniel Bowditch was baptized here. He later wrote The Practical Navigator, used by sailors for centuries. Jonathan Pugh, whose scarlet letter and papers Nathaniel Hawthorne later found at the Custom House, is buried here. And the constitution of the Diocese of Massachusetts was adopted here in 1790. Salem's oldest bell, cast in 1740, hangs in the tower with a nine bell chime installed in 1887. These exhibits and ship models are in the Salem Visitor Center. The first militia company in Massachusetts Bay is organized in Salem in 1629. With the need for greater military organization, the East Regiment, later the Essex Regiment, is organized on December 13, 1636. This date marks the official birth of the National Guard of the United States. An Essex County militiamen respond to the Lexington Alarm on April 19, 1775, and they take part in the fiercest fighting of the day in Arlington. Essex militiamen later fight at Bunker Hill and help form units of the Continental Army. The Derby BB Summer House is a one-room structure built in the federal style intended for serving light afternoon meals in a garden setting. Originally graced the garden overlooking the river behind the mansion of Elias Haskett Derby or King Derby. Salem's preeminent architect Samuel McIntyre designed the entire state including the gardens and the summer house for Derby, one of the richest merchants in Salem. Garden houses such as this were based on such structures found on the estates of England that became popular in the late 18th century, hidden in little nooks and crannies and were a place of private escape and quiet. This example was substantially restored to its original appearance in the late 1980s and retains important McIntyre carvings. It is one of only three surviving such McIntyre summer houses and retains nearly complete historic integrity. The garden view provides a landscape context for what the elites living here in the 18th century would have been looking out for while having their tea. This national historic landmark was built by leather dresser John Ward between 1684 and 1732. Typical of a first period house, the building has a steep pitched roof with a large central chimney, an overhanging second floor, and casement windows with leaded glass.
Salem is full of witches even today. People are walking around in costume. Uh, you've got your scary witches. You've got your sexy witches. And you may even have a few sandwiches. Eh. From 1775 to 1783, Salem played a significant role in the American Revolutionary War. Six years after the war ended, President George Washington used his first year in office to tour each of the 13 states to build support for the new federal government. On October 29, 1789, celebrations were held throughout the city when President Washington visited Salem to thank local militiamen and sailors for their part in the war effort. Washington predicted a great future for Salem, and although he died in 1799, his words proved prophetic. In the two decades following the American Revolution, Salem's hugely profitable trade with China and East India transformed this hard scrapple seaport into a global powerhouse. By the early 1800s, Salem had become the wealthiest city per capita in the U.S., and its port was one of the world's busiest. In 1801, wealthy merchant families invested in transforming the Salem Commons' swampy land into a pleasant park. In 1805, these families in the town commissioned Samuel McIntyre, Salem's distinguished woodcarver and architect, to design and construct four decorative entrances to the park. The main entrance, styled after a Roman triumphal arch, was designated the Washington Arch as a lasting tribute to Washington's legacy. Inside this impressive building were the offices of United States Customs Service collectors, inspectors, and other officials. It was here that ships' captains and owners paid duties on imported goods and conducted other business. Before the passage of the Federal Income Tax Act of 1913, customs duties on ships' cargoes provided most of the money to run the federal government. Between 1789 and 1840, duties collected here earned the Treasury more than $20 million, a substantial amount in those days. The wharf in front of you was Salem's longest and was once one of the busiest in the nation. The first 800 feet of the wharf was begun in 1762 and completed around 1770 by Captain Richard Derby, one of the wealthiest merchants in pre-revolutionary Salem, and his son Elias Haskett Derby. During the War of Independence, American privateers sailed from here to prey on British ships on the high seas. So it's called Derby Wharf. 
If you visited Salem's waterfront in the late 1700s or early 1800s, you would have been impressed not only by the ships and their exotic cargo, but also by the variety of artisans and craftsmen who worked on the wharf. Sail makers, riggers, rope makers, and blacksmiths were only some of the skilled workers vital to Salem's fleets. The Friendship of Salem is a full-size, fully operational replica of Friendship, a cargo ship built in Salem, Massachusetts in 1797 for several merchants. Friendship was an East Indiaman built for international trade. The original Friendship made 15 voyages around the world, trading local products like dried cod fish and timber for pepper, spices, sugar, coffee, silk, tea, and other exotic goods. Today, Friendship of Salem sails to nearby ports, helping to bring the region's maritime history to life. Walking around Salem, Massachusetts, and uh, you know, geez, I wonder if I should be talking like with a Kennedy accent. Walking around uh, Salem, Massachusetts, and uh, you know, anyway, uh, interesting place if you're into witchcraft and seances and weird crap. And this is the place for you. They got tarot card readings and psychic buildings and uh, witchcraft books and all kinds of scary stuff. Something terrible did take place in 1692 in Salem. It is known today as the Salem Witch Trials. Nearly 200 people in the Salem area, they were accused of witchcraft. 20 of the accused were tried and executed. Victims of fear, superstition, and a court system that failed to protect them. It would seem that the trials were started by some people that accused others of witchcraft and some of the people doing the accusations were teenagers and even younger. One little child, Dorothy Good, was four or five years old when she was accused of being a witch. Some of the testimonies of those being accused, Martha Corey said, I am an innocent person. I never had to do with witchcraft since I was born. I am a gospel woman. Mary Asti said, The Lord above knows my innocence, as that the great day will be known to men and angels. I petition to your honors, not for my own life, for I know I must die, and my appointed time is set. But the Lord, he knows it is that, if it be possible, no more innocent blood be shed. Elizabeth Howe said, 
If it was the last moment I was to live, God knows I am innocent. George Jacob said, Well, burn me or hang me. I will stand in the truth of Christ. Sadly, when all was said and done, about 200 people had been accused. 30 people were found guilty. 19 of them were executed by hanging 14 men and 5 women. One other man, Giles Corey, was pressed to death after refusing to enter a plea, and at least five people died in jail. Thank goodness not all witchcraft is scary. There was a TV show back from 1964 to 1972 called Bewitched, starring Elizabeth Montgomery as Samantha Stevens, and there is a statue erected in Salem in her honor. spent the day in Salem, Massachusetts, and uh, one observation, I guess, that we have is that, uh, and if you are from Massachusetts, please don't be offended when I say this, but it's almost like when a kid turns 16 years old, their dad, like, throws him the keys and says, hey, I know you've never driven before, but go out and take the car for a spin. Folks drive crazy here. I mean, holy cow, they'll, you'll be going 10 miles over the speed limit and they'll pass you like you're standing still. Uh, they'll cut you off, they run you over, it's wacko, crazy. Anyway, we are headed towards Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island, and we'll be uh, spending a couple of days there and shooting some video and can't wait to show you all that we see. We so much appreciate you subscribing to our channel, liking it, sharing it, and joining us on the journey. Thank you.